Well, I'm joined in the studio now by Iranian journalist of The Guardian, Saeed Kamali Degan. I mean, first of all, the lifting of sanctions, that's an extraordinary moment for the people of Iran, isn't it? Yes, it's, you know, we are talking about Iran, the second largest economy in the Middle East, a country of 80 million people, isolated for 10 years because of sanctions and also internal uh, power struggles. And now this country is on the brink of an extraordinary transformation. Sanctions are going to be lifted, you know, sometime, maybe tonight or tomorrow, but they are going to be lifted. And um, this young population is going to be reconnected to the world. So very soon, Iranian banks would be able to reestablish connections to the SWIFT, which facilitates banking transactions, for example. Like people like me who are Iranian, we're not able to uh, transfer money to Iran or receive money from Iran because of sanctions. You know, sanctions affected everyone. There were blanket sanctions. And now is the time when, um, you know, this, I, I always say that Iran is like, a, it has a soul that has been broken or suppressed. And now it's the time for it to rise up. No, I mean, the prisoner exchange came as something of a surprise. The combination of that and the lifting of the sanctions, what does that tell us about the balance of power in Iran? It, it tells us a lot about the power of diplomacy. You know, it was, uh, you know, it's because of Rouhani who came to power two years ago and somebody like, Obama, who's in power in, the, in America, who's keen to have new relations with Iran, that, that this is happening. If, if this was uh, the time when we had Ahmadinejad, you know, people have forgotten him, but things have massively changed, uh, extraordinary change in Iraq. You know, the, we have an Iranian foreign minister talking directly to an American you know, foreign minister. I never thought that I would see that in my lifetime. So this is uh, extraordinary. I think it's the power of diplomacy. It shows the potential. And, and the power of directly talking to each other between these two uh, old enemies. You know, things have changed massively. We had the hostage crisis, and now we have an American uh, foreign secretary sitting across the table and with his Iranian foreign minister. What do you think it will mean on the ground for ordinary people? How will they be responding to all of this? Uh, I, well, when the nuclear deal was announced in July, there was an outburst of happiness in the streets of Tehran. Uh, I don't know whether that the same thing would happen. I think if, if the lifting of sanctions is announced tonight, we might see similar scenes in Tehran. I mean, it all sounds very positive, and of course, that is a really yeah. extraordinary development. But are there any dangers in all of this in terms of keeping hardliners, both in Iran and in the US, on board? Well, I think, I think this deal is good for the peace in the region. I think it's good for Iran, and I think it's good for America. And, and, and it's uh, very telling that we have hardliners in Iran and the US on the, on the same side. You know, they are both opposed to this deal. I, um, I follow this very closely, and I think this is very good for the peace in the region, and I'm very hopeful. And, and just I'm very, very, very briefly, Saudi Arabia, you know, sees Iran yeah. as its main enemy in the region, you know, and has cut diplomatic ties. You know, how will this play? Well, it's going to be, it has going to be a very serious consequences on the, for example, the Syria talks, because Syria is now, in a, you know, is facing a big problem. And unless we have Iran and Saudi Arabia on the same table, uh, we're not going to reach any agreement. So I think it's very, it, it shows that we need to find a way to bring Iran and Saudis back on the table and make them talk uh, to each other if you want to see a peaceful uh, future for the Middle Saeed, East. Kamali Tekan, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.